Well, good evening, everyone. It is just a pleasure to be here with you this evening. I have a, a couple of announcements to, uh, to make, one of, the, one of which is a story, but it, it's warm in here. Uh, but uh, trust me, it's not as warm as it, it could have been. Uh, now, I, I've only uh, been back to Canada. I grew up in Abbotsford, but uh, by the way, my name is David Yonke. I know we have a lot of folks here uh, that don't go to Gospel Fellowship, so I'm the pastor of, of Gospel Fellowship, and we're looking forward to this evening, and we're glad that you've joined us. Uh, but uh, I, I lived in, in the United States for a number of years, up until about five years ago, and so I think in Fahrenheit, so you'll have to excuse me, but when, when I looked at the weather forecast for today, it said that it was going to be 91, some of you know what that means, and others of you might not mean much to, but that's over 30 degrees, and I knew that in the auditorium that would get quite warm. And so I, I prayed and I said, Lord, would you just let it be under 80 degrees uh, uh, that Sunday? And I'm looking at the weather forecast going, that's just not going to happen. And, and uh, so then the next day I looked and it said 89, not 91. I thought, okay. So I prayed again. And, uh, and then the next day it was 87. I'm not kidding. And then the next day it was 86. And, and, I, and I did not expect the smoke to come in. And all of a sudden the smoke came in. And, and it, it, it cooled things down. And so I looked at the forecast uh, this morning. And it said it was going to be 80. And I thought, I prayed for under 80. And I, and I, and I looked, and about 5 p.m. it was going to be at its hottest. And I, I pulled out my phone at about 5 o'clock. And it was 79, and it just went down from there. Okay, so it would have been a lot, a lot hotter in here. But we, we thank the Lord that we, we can have this, uh, this venue, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, in the warmth of Christ together. Uh, just a few announcements. We do have washroom facilities just out these doors and all the way down uh, the hallway through the big double doors. If you could avoid these washrooms here as the folks that are being baptized tonight kind of have all their stuff set up and that's where they're going to be uh, changing. So, there, so those of you who know the building, they do exist, but if you could just use the ones back this way. Also, there is, uh, are some nursery facilities just behind this glass here in the auditorium. The sound will be piped into there. And so if you have any little ones that, and you'd like to use that, please feel uh, free to do so. Very excited uh, for this evening. I know all of you are as well. And we're looking forward to what God has been doing in the lives of those who have come to publicly testify their faith in Christ to all of you. And we thank you for being here to witness it. All right, well, we're going to begin by singing together a wonderful song that speaks of exactly what we're doing here tonight. There is a fountain filled with blood. Would you all stand with me, please, as we sing? Blood, blue. 
Christ is all. That's what a baptism is about, right? Commitment to Christ, that we would, in front of our brothers and sisters in the Lord, declare, I want to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus. In, in this uh, nation, we don't fear doing that, perhaps, as in other nations where they put, perhaps, their lives on the line to be baptized. And yet we understand the significance of it, and that's why all of you came this evening to witness these individuals professing Christ. And so please listen to these words as we sing, Christ is all. I have found a treasure that can't be taken, found a well that won't run dry. Forsaken, behold what love, what life is mine. Good endless striving now make me righteous.
Baptism. Baptisms are probably my favorite part of church life. Every single time I witness a baptism, I can't do it with dry eyes. And this baptism in particular is special to me because it will be the first time that I've ever conducted a baptism. And those seven individuals that are here this evening that are ready to publicly de declare their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord, I'm very excited to help them take this step of obedience. But we come to this iconic text, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. I'm going to hold the microphone. Which says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we come to a night like this and we've all seen baptisms before, most of us anyway, but we've never thought about how weird they are. Because if you've not grown up in a Christian home, if you haven't heard of baptism before, if you've grown up in another religion or perhaps no religion at all, Somebody believing in your faith and then going and being dunked underwater it really is kind of strange. In the baptism classes that we taught at our church before this evening, we talked about that very thing. And so we want to answer the question for you, what is baptism? Why are we doing it? Why are you all sitting here and the seven individuals are going to go under the water back there? And so I have two questions for you tonight as we consider why baptism? And the first question is, are you washed clean? Are you washed clean? And the second question is, are you walking committed? Are you washed clean and are you walking committed? Now, we all understand the concept of washing, right? What do you do before you eat dinner? You wash your hands. Washing your hands can sometimes be a difficult chore, especially if you're working on your bicycle and you touch that bicycle chain and, and you have oil and grit on your hands that's difficult to get off. When I lived in South Carolina, I, was, I worked on a stage production crew and we built sets for operas and for uh, Shakespearean productions and we would paint these sets and at the end of the day, you're trying to get all the paint off your hands and no matter what kind of soap you're using with grit in it, you can't get it off of your hands. Children, when they come in from playing in the mud, you sometimes have to take some kind of a cloth and scrub that mud off of them because it's just caked on and you don't want it to get on your carpet. We understand the concept of washing. When, when the disciples came in uh, for the Last Supper, they had been walking in sandals on dusty streets and Jesus washed their feet because they were dirty. Some of you at lunch today may have gotten a stain on your, your shirt and you took it home and perhaps you tried to use OxyClean or, or something to get it out and you couldn't get the stain out of your shirt no matter how much you washed it. When I worked at McDonald's for seven years over on Borkwin Crescent, we had a hand wash timer that went off every 20 minutes. And 
Every 20 minutes we had to wash our hands until they were raw so that all of your food would be clean. You're welcome if you ate there during those years. We've all known what it's like to take a long skinny cup that we can't reach our hand down into and try to clean the bottom of it. We understand the concept of physical washing. So did Israel in the Old Testament. They understood the concept of being unclean. Israelites were not allowed to do a lot of things, for instance, touching a pig, touching a dead body. Israelites were considered unclean if they had a skin infection, if their house had certain kinds of mold in it. And in order to be able to be allowed to be back in and amongst the Israelites, back in the worship of the temple, Israelites had to wash. We read in Leviticus 15, verse 11, anyone whom the one with the discharge touches without having rinsed his hands in water shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And this concept of washing gets us a little bit closer to the concept that we're experiencing tonight, a spiritual cleansing. Because friends, we do not have dirty hands or dirty feet. We do not have dirty clothes or a dirty cup. But we have dirty hearts. We're a different kind of dirty. We're dirty on the inside. And there's nothing that we can do about it. In Matthew chapter 15, the Pharisees were upset because they were looking at the disciples when they were about ready to eat dinner and they said the disciples are not washing their hands before dinner. This is a tradition that we have. They're unclean. Jesus looked at those Pharisees and said, no, it is what is within you that makes you unclean. And in verse 20 of Matthew 15, he said, These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Friends, we're dirty on the inside, and we can't get clean. Isaiah 64 and verse 6 says, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. And when we recognize that, when we recognize that our inside is dirty, then we can find our washing. Isaiah saw a vision of the Lord high and lifted up. And in Isaiah 6 and verse 5, he said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen, have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. My wife and I were hiking up Ledgeview to McKee Peak the other day, and as we were coming down, Allie was not wearing very good hiking shoes. She was wearing tennis shoes, and they didn't have a lot of grip, and she slipped and she fell right on her back, or so I thought. She actually broke her fall with her elbow, and all of her weight went onto her elbow and onto those rocks, and it was the gnarliest scrape that I have ever seen. And I had the job of cleaning it. Now, those who know me know that I'm a little queasy at, at that sort of thing, but I wasn't allowed to be. I can't tell my wife who's in tears when I'm holding alcohol on her, on her cut that, that I'm queasy. And so I continued. And as we began to clean it, which took quite a bit of time, I was able to do it because I could see it. I could get to it. I could put alcohol on it. I could rub it with a washcloth. But we can't do that with our insides. We cannot clean our inward filth. We need someone to do that for us. We need a passive washing. The problem is our inward uncleanness is an infection that's going to kill us. Allie didn't want the alcohol on her arm, but she knew that if she didn't have it on her, her arm, it would get infected and something worse could happen. Friends, if we do not take care of our inward uncleanness, we're going to die. We're going to die. In Luke 11, 39 and 40, we read, And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? The dirt is going to kill us. Romans six twenty three says, For the wages of sin is death. Oh, we need to be washed. When King David saw a woman atop a rooftop and he wanted to commit adultery with her, so he did. 
And to cover it up, he killed a righteous man, Uriah. And when the prophet Nathan came and stuck his finger in David's face and said those words, Thou art the man, David repented of his sins. And he wrote Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, he said, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He said just five verses later, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And friends, this is what you need. This is what I need to be washed by God. And I would implore you tonight, if, the, if you have not, that you would cry out to Jesus to wash you. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And if you want to be washed this evening, you can be. It's so simple. Romans 10 verse 9 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he'll wash you. He'll wash your insides clean. He'll wash you with his blood as we sing about in our first song this evening. And he'll wash you with the water of the Spirit as Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 says, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And friends, once you are washed, you receive an initial baptism. An initial baptism. It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's what every Christian, the moment they believe in Jesus Christ, receives. That's when the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. And when you are baptized by the Holy Spirit, you become dead to your sin. Romans six eleven says, So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And once you have died to sin and been made alive in Christ, once you have had your insides washed clean, once you have had your first baptism, then you can come to your second. And that's why we're here tonight. Because all seven individuals that are here tonight to be baptized, it is their second baptism. And so what is this baptism? This baptism is, baptism is simply an outward declaration of an inward change. An outward symbol of an inward change. Many of you might wear a cross around your neck. That is simply a symbol of salvation. It is a symbol of what Christ did for you in dying for your sins. These waters do not save. Those that are going into these waters tonight have already been saved, as Romans 10.9 says, because they have confessed Jesus is Lord and believed in their heart that God has raised him from the dead. And so what are we doing here tonight? These individuals are showing you their commitment to follow Jesus. That was our second question. Are you walking committed. 2 Corinthians 7 1 says, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of the Lord. And so tonight, would you wrestle, even as you have heard these words, you have sung these songs, and you will witness these individuals professing Christ. Would you wrestle? Are you washed clean? Would you wrestle? Are you walking committed. At this time, I'm going to ask that Stephen Dangan come and lead us in a prayer. I've asked him to write a prayer, and I only just found out today in the Lord's timing that 18 years ago today, Stephen was baptized by his father in Albert Dick Lake. His father, a year and a half later, went home to be with the Lord. And I didn't know this when I asked him to pray for us this evening, but I said, would you, would you specifically prepare a prayer uh, to say tonight? And he just simply said yes. And this morning I found out that this was a very special day for him as well. So Stephen, if you would please come and, and lead us in prayer as we prepare for the baptism. And I'll ask all those who are being baptized to please now proceed uh, out these doors along with those who are 
are assisting. All right, let's play. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you that we could come together and witness these baptisms. Thank you so much, Lord, for the newness of life we have in Christ, that we've passed from death into life through the blood of your Son. Thank you so much, Lord, that our old man has been dead and buried, and we've been raised up in newness of life, and we're raised with Christ in the heavenlies. Thank you so very much that you, King of kings and Lord of lords and creator of the universe, that you want to have a relationship with us. I pray you would just work in our hearts a desire to want to pursue you more and run after you, and that you would just conform us into the image of Christ, and that we would just be to your honor and praise, and that we would just want to run this race and lay aside every sin and weight that so easily ensnares us, and that you would just show us your love in a deeper way, and that we would just be enraptured with your love, and that this world would grow dimmer and dimmer, and that you would just become so much more important and bigger and wonderful to us, and that you'd be just glorified in our lives. I pray this in your name, the name of your Son. Amen. All right, well, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to baptize these individuals tonight. Each of them has prepared just a short testimony of their profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And um, as they give that, we'll, we'll baptize them in obedience to God's command. And we'll look forward to hearing from them tonight. We have uh, seven for baptism. And so... Uh, I would just ask you, you don't need to remain quiet, okay? Uh, we don't need to be a, a quiet congregation. So when they come up out of the water, feel free to put your hands together. There's not that many ways uh, to show our, our excitement um, for what's happening. Um, but, but just don't feel like you have to sit there morose and, and, uh, and silent, okay? Um, but, but we just want to celebrate this time with our brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. And so our, our first individual who's coming into the baptismal tank is Avery Grafstrom. And it's been my pleasure to hear Avery's testimony of faith in Christ. And she's going to come in now and, and just briefly share that with you. When I was a littler kid, we always went to church, read the Bible, prayed, etc. We still do, of course. And Pastor Yonke put it in a really good way. He said, I never remember a time where I didn't believe. It's the same for me. But I didn't pray the prayer until I had a deeper understanding of what exactly that was. So I probably did it when I was around eight years old. Jesus died on the cross in my place for my sin. So I take comfort in knowing that I can be with him in heaven for all of eternity. But for my time here on earth, I'm excited to grow and learn more in my faith. All right. Avery, based upon your profession of faith and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. At this time, I'll ask Bev Boguski to come down and join me in the baptismal tank, please. It's been such a pleasure to get to know Bev, to... Uh, sit in her home with her husband, Dennis, and, and speak of Christ with her. years ago, I wanted to repent. I started to pray to Jesus, telling him I am a sinner, and I ask for forgiveness. I believe 
that he died for my sins and that he rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I ask him to come into my heart and life. The day that Pastor David came to my home and explained about baptism, I knew that in my heart I needed to be baptized. The Bible says repent and be baptized. I'm just being obedient to the word of God. Bev Bogusky, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. Next, I have the special privilege of baptizing my nephew, Theodore Partington. Theodore, if you could come into the tank, please. Theodore is nine years old, and yet... <laughs> and, and even though he is nine years old, I, 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 you know, with children, I don't have a special age. I just want to know that they understand the gospel. And so I sat down with him and I asked him a lot of difficult questions, questions that even some adults might find difficult because I just wanted to see how far the knowledge went. And Theodore understands uh, his faith in Christ and, and he wants to be baptized in obedience to God's command. And so he has something to share with you now. One day I was sitting out at home thinking about salvation, about how my parents told me about salvation. I was thinking about wanting to turn away from my sin and repent and believe in Jesus. So I did. That is when I became a Christian. A Christian is someone who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, so, so to, say, to save them from sin. Sin is breaking God's law and trusting in yourself. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. The only thing you need to do to become a Christian is ask, Christian is to ask Jesus into your heart. Repent and trust that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins and rose again. Since I became a Christian, I don't want to lie like I used to, and I want to be baptized because I want to follow the command of the Bible. Amen. Theodore Partington, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command... I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. At this time, we have Carl Grastrom, and again with, with Carl uh, the Grafstroms have just been such a beloved family in our church, and I've had such a good time getting to know all of them. And as I've gotten to know uh, Carl, he, he has a very clear testimony of faith in Christ. And when I said, Carl, why do you want to be baptized? He says, because I, I want to obey God's command. You know what? That's good enough for me. And so uh, Carl just has a few words for you now. Hello, I was uh, saved at a very young age, and uh, I knew I needed Jesus, and I knew that I was a sinner, so I asked him into my heart. Many, many years later, I've experienced multiple personal revivals and other forms of growth in faith, and knowing that I cannot be saved through works, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, hoping I strive to be way better 
and be a better Christian, hoping to one day hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you. Carl Grafton, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. Our next individual for baptism this evening is Jaron Esau. Uh, Jaron began to attend our church uh, just a little while ago. I'm helping the guys in two. They're narrow stairs. Uh, but Jaron, Jaron began to attend our church just a little while ago and has been an absolute joy to get to know. And uh, uh, a man with whom I can have deep biblical conversations, which are my favorite kind of conversations to have. And uh, I had, I've had some opportunity to play disc golf with Jaron and uh, to spend some time in his home and have him in our youth group until we kicked him out when he, when he graduated. And, and Jaron pro- pro- has, those of you who know him, you already know, he has a very clear profession of faith in Christ and, and loves the Lord. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, perhaps the future of what might come as uh, he, he, well, we won't say too much, but he is dating Abby Grafstrom. And so we'll look forward to uh, maybe a future there. Anyway, Jaron has a few words for you. I was saved as a child, very young, and from that moment on, there just has always been a feeling in my soul that was this recognition of Jesus. There's a verse in Isaiah that says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And to me, I think that best symbolizes what it's meant to grow with Jesus in my faith. It is something where I know that I have to absolutely rely on him. And so there are definitely times where I turn away and I'm losing it and it just, I feel so far away. And it's just been that feeling and that just recognition that when I turn to Jesus and when I put it all on him, that's when I'm at my best. And that is just, it's what fuels me. So this is my declaration that there is nothing I can do to save myself, that Jesus is the only one that can save me. And I just, I can't wait to see what he has in store for me, whatever that happens to be. Jaron Esau, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in our obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. Well, we have two individuals left to come into the baptismal waters this evening. And these two are a duo, okay? And uh, this is a duo that hasn't been in our our church long. They also haven't known the Lord long. And uh, I have had the privilege of just very recently uh, seeing them come to Christ and wanting to serve him and uh, and and. We, dis- we do discipleship together every uh, couple of weeks. And so this is a, a father-son uh, that Wes fails senior and Wes fails uh, junior. And I'm very excited. They, we sat down, we talked about baptism. They understand the gospel. They understand baptism. And they said, yes, we, wanna, we, we want to be baptized. They actually asked, asked me. And so at this time, we'll have Wes fails junior come on in. Hi, my name is Wesley Fales. I'm 34, and I'm here to um, confess my love and faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. Wes, based upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him 
the newness of life. And without much ado, as I've already introduced the two of them, we'll have Wes Fales Sr. come down into the tank. Hi, my name is Wes Fells, Sr. I was baptized as a baby. I went to Sunday school, and along the way, my family stopped going to church because they were too busy. And along the way, I've seen a lot of horrible things, and I lost my faith. Um, a person moved into my complex, and his name is Bill. And he said to me, he used to have Sunday um, talking groups. He asked me to be there. And I said, no, Bill, that's never going to happen. And he said, why? I said, do you see the devils all over me? I said, I think it'd be more fun in hell sometimes than in heaven. And I don't belong in heaven. And he said, that's blasphemy, Wes. Please don't say that again. I never did say that to him again, and he never gave up to me, up, up on me. It took him two years to get me to go to church. He got me feeding the homeless. He opened my heart. We prayed when we ate lunch. We prayed when we finished feeding the homeless. It slowly feelings started to grow in my heart he brought he said I moved and I uh, no he said uh, um, you need to drive in or you need to come with me I have a stop to do and I said no I'll come with you and I'll come to your stop well he introduced me to this church and that's when I opened my heart. You have my phone, please. I'm in a healthy, God centered relationship, and I feel more confident in my love for Christ than ever. I'm not perfect, I still have my ups and downs, but my focus is on God. And serving him. I believe that Christ died for me and has forgiven given, uh, my sins, and I am ready to take the steps in publicly declaring my faith. Amen. West fails based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command. I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with him by baptism into death, raised with him to newness of life. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you so much for, for being here to witness this, uh, these individuals professing faith in Christ together. Uh, I'm, at this time, I'm going to go and get out of uh, these waiters and I'll ask uh, Ron Ravel to come and he's going to lead you if, if uh, we can get the music stand set up and the microphone, a couple of gentlemen to do that. And uh, he'll lead you in amazing grace. And we're going to do two, uh, two different kinds of amazing grace. You'll sing amazing grace, my chains are gone. And then you'll break into the final stanza of the original amazing grace when we've been there 10,000 years. Enjoy singing together. Thank you. 
And I'm going to get you to stand with us while we sing, please. And I'm going to lead. I'm not singing to you. Okay? All right. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Again, thank you for coming. Uh, we don't want you to leave, okay? So we want you to just stay and visit, have some good Sunday evening fellowship with us. And so when, uh, when we conclude here, we'll, uh, we'll head right out these doors and down in th into the gymnasium. It's the only air-conditioned room in the building. It's nice and cool in there, okay? And there's a lot of dessert. And so you need to help us eat it. We've got coffee and juice and water and dessert. And so please just don't run, walk. But uh, go enjoy some cool air, some, some fellowship with God's people, and some dessert tonight. Let's close in prayer. Oh, our Father, we thank you so much for your amazing grace that you lavished on us in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for these seven who now have declared publicly their faith in Christ. And we pray that you would give them the commitment to walk with you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.